Coming up is an exclusive interview with a musician who hails from the Sao region of Cameroon. He goes by the name of Montu Valdu, and here he is telling us all about the Sour Blues. So, Montu Valdu, am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yeah, Montu Valdu. Montu Valdu. So, you're from the Sour region of Cameroon. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit of what that area is like? Yes, it's, um, the Sour region is um, the region, the coast of Cameroon. And, yes, if, um, it goes from the, the, the west of Cameroon to the south of Cameroon and uh, in the far in the west people speak English because um, Cameroon, Cameroon was um, not colonized but was uh, ruled by British and and by the yeah by Britain and France after the first war world war because Germany have lost the, lost the war so France and and Britain, you know, to possession of Cameroon. So, the sour region, sour region in Cameroon, <laughs> yeah, is along the coast, you know, the coast of Cameroon. And um, in my native language, they call the coast sour. And people who live in that, those areas call themselves sour. Now, your music has been described as sour blues. Yeah. Can you define that for us? We don't really understand the two <laughs> words together. Yeah, sour blues, why? Um, sour blues because, anyway, to be, very, to be honest with you, um, I'm not the one who said sour blues in the first place. It's the, it came from the mouth of some journalists, of the writing, some journalists in France. And in the, in, in the early 2000, um, because I was there to try to sell my music, to promote it when I released my first album, and um, they they asked me how they, how could define my music. So I say it's not me to define my music. I just define my music as the most beautiful one. They say, oh, it sounds a bit bluesy, a bit jazzy, and. Um, but it's different from the blues from the United States, or the Mississippi blues, or the Delta blues. It is different from the, the desert blues as well, as um, a bit like, you know, people like Ali Fakature, you know, those Malian musicians. And, and at that time, you had that trend of blues because uh, Martin Scorsese just released uh, a series of movies linking the blues from Mali to Mississippi. So they say, wow, your music sounds blues, but you're not neither from Mali, neither <laughs> nor the, the States. But I say, wow, anyway, I'm from Cameroon, so, but they know a bit the music of Cameroon is not Makosa, it's not, it's not Bikusi. So where are you from in Cameroon? I say, I'm from the coast of Cameroon, sour, I'm a sour boy. So they say, can, can we, can we, call your music sour blues, I say, this is it. You find the word, so this is sour blues. <laughs> and now, when you're performing, you use pedals. Yeah. When you're performing, what do you do with those pedals exactly? But, you, you know, um, I'm, I'm a guitarist, and um, a lot of guitarists use pedals. So, you know, to have a, a variety of sounds. A bit like somebody who plays keyboard, but who use a piano, a, who plays piano, but who use a keyboard with different sound, not just the acoustic sound of piano. So pedals in a guitar help us to have a very a large variety of sounds. So I use them as a guitarist, but I also use um, some pedals like um, um, loop pedals call it the jam session that allowed me on stage live to record myself for example so I can record different harmonies but live on stage I can record another layer of guitars you know um, that allow me to, 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 to play as if they were a band before your eyes you know so I don't miss a band so I play it and uh, it sounds like a band even if I'm alone on stage, yeah. So this formula I named, uh, I uh, yeah, the one and the many. <laughs> oh, that's the name of your album title. Yeah, yeah, my latest album title, but it's also the one, the name of the formula I'm using on stage. And 
what sort of influences come through the album, The One and the Many? The One and the Many um, is um, what sort of influences? Um, how can I put it? Um, the One and Many, first of all, is a philosophy, is a concept, is um, yeah. Behind that concept, you have the notion of um, us, human being, or creature. You know. Us, we um, link together, all of us. So um, you cannot exist if I'm not here. You know, everything exists because there's anything else. You know, so we all link. We all link us animals, human beings, but we also link with the nature and everything that exists. Like for example, we breathe the same air. So, so we link. We, we link the same molecules. You know goes from one person to another. So everything people do here has consequence anywhere else, even if people are not conscious of that. So the one and the many is then that connection, you know, about, and is also the notion that everything come from just one thing. So it's like the, the, the multiple come from a single thing, and the single thing, if you dissolute, a single thing become a multitude so yeah we all link so the moral behind all that concept and philosophy is that um, we should care about other even if we have to look after ourselves so um, but it's also a message um, because I recorded this album on my own so I produce it I arrange it I play all the instruments I record it, I perform it, I play it. All, the vo all the vocals, all the instruments and everything. And, um, and on, on stage also I do it live on my own, so it sounds like. So is as I say, is also a message because I didn't have a lot of mean when I did it. Um, the message um, towards um, young people or beginning, beginners or any musician because nowadays it's very tough to find a producer produce your music it's very tough even when you produce your music to sell it so uh, and um, I used to, to to receive a lot of message especially now with internet Facebook and from very young very young musician back in Cameroon who asked me oh can I do can you help me can we do that so it's a message to all the youth in, in Africa in, in particular in Cameroon that you can do it yourself don't wait for other people to stay if you can already start clapping or do you can use everything you have on your side if there's if the talent is there even just one voice even a cappella you can do an album you can play you can record an album just a guitar with a voice recently i talked with a, a legendary a cappella band from south africa it is smith black mambazo they don't use any of the instrument and the voice but look they're worldwide known so yeah, so is that message. But practically, the one and the many, as I told you earlier, is also the 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 formula the formula I'm using on stage um, uh, because I'm the one, but I'm surrounded by those many who are all these instruments. Mm -hmm. So my guitar, my harmonica, my pedals, my voices, my percussions, and all those stuff. So yeah, we. They were, they're the one, I'm the many, or vice versa. And the audience as well, because my music is also for other people. I'm not doing my music just for, for me. If, if, if it was the case, I would have just stayed on my own and doing this for the audience, because I, have, I think I have something to share. I think I have something to say sometime. So, um, yeah, so the, the audience are the many, I'm the one, or they are the one, I'm the many. So this is the one and the many, and this is my new album. You're mentioning the audience, you've obviously performed in France and just recently you performed at the Hackney Empire. Um, how does the crowd compare? Like, how do they react to your music? What are the differences? Uh, <laughs> I would say everywhere is almost the same. People react very positively to my music. They, they relate themselves to my music. They connect with me and with my music. Um, yeah, you mentioned France. I, I I went almost everywhere in all the continents in this world, um, where people don't even have a clue of what is the language I'm I'm singing. 
um, with I sing in Dwala language, my native language. And um, yeah, and you have people like in Asia who never heard even of Cameroon or even that language at least. In, it's the same in Mexico, you know, or in Europe, all over Europe. And recently, as I mentioned, I taught all the UK. We had 30 dates um, alongside ladies me, Black Mambazo. And everywhere, you know, we had almost standing ovation every night in, you know, and venues of the capacity of 2,000 people or 3,000. So people always um, receive my music positively, and this encouraged me a lot. Um, because I don't sing in English, I do not sing in English. I can sing in English, but this album is a project uh, with specific, so um, has to be coherent. But um, yeah, I can sing in English or in French because I speak French and English. But uh, the songs from that album are all in Douala, and people like it. People sing it. It's weird. <laughs> Not weird, but you know, that's it, you know, it's very nice. Yeah. Now, you're a Francophone Cameroonian living in the UK, mm. and um, most Francophone Cameroonians prefer to live in France. Why yeah. did you decide to come to the UK? But it's like anything, you don't know where you end up be, you know. Um, I, I, um, one day I was in Georgia, and I met some Cameroonian there. What are you doing here? You know, it's life, you know, it, it might be a job, it might be a relationship, it might be adventurous travel, but for me, it's for the job that I'm here. But now I have a life here, but I, have, I even have a family here. But um, in the first place, I came here because of the opportunities of the job, you know. In Cameroon, it's not easy um, to be a young musician, to earn a living, there's no even um, 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 royalty so, um, companies there, this kind of stuff. It's very tough, but you have people who live with the music there, but um, for what I wanted to do and um, my ambition and so on, I, have, I had to, to come in a place where I can do it freely, but knowing that I'm doing the right way and knowing that the thing I, I'm doing is accountable for everything I'm doing, like when I perform somewhere, um, to make sure that um, all the conditions are there. And anyway, um, it's a bit like you see some people, some French or some English people who live in Cameroon. Why are they living there? Because maybe the companies, um, you have French people who live there because of health, you know, or, or BP, from some English people, or even just because they, they, they teach or because, you know, the world belongs to all of us, you know, I don't believe in those things, those borders things, it's just politician and the evil and the wickedness of, uh, you know, uh, I think we, human beings, we, this earth belongs to all of us, everywhere, wherever where we are. I just want to pick up something you said, um, when you're in Cameroon, it's quite a struggle when you earn a living through music. I um, just wanted to know, were your family supportive of your choice to do music as a career? Some members of my family, not all of them, but it's always the case because, and I can understand because the the, the music is not organized uh, like uh, professionally. So for a lot of, especially the parents of other generation, to see you as a musician is a bit like um, a waste, especially if you're educated, if you've been in university and this kind of stuff, you know. So yeah, but some other people could understand, especially people who were close to me, who could see me sometimes, they understood that it was not just a joke, it was not just a um, you know, distraction, it was a serious matter, and you could seriously earn a living doing music. And finally, uh, where can we see you performing next? Uh, next is very... Uh, in next week. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the interview. <laughs> Meme na maya wu mayese we 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 basi bo to sola ngeli banongi wa banuma wa jongo mongo wanu bo di babo mese basi bo to sola ngeli banongi